Today's sponsor of the Vision Quest podcast is 920 Hat Company. Leather patch hats are in, and 920 Hat Company is here to hook you up with your very own custom hat. All patches are lasered on top grade genuine leather and on popular brand hats like Richardson and FlexFit. Whether you're looking to show off your business or want a one-of-a-kind hat for yourself, 920 Hat Company can do it all. All the hats are handcrafted right in the Fox Valley, but worn across America. With over 500 hats in stock, they guarantee fast turnaround times. Honestly, Liam, you know, looking at these hats, solid, right? Yeah, they're pretty, I like them. I like that patch, that patch itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of a kind stuff. Uh, I know his name is Trevor. Uh, he does great work. He's actually gotten what? I think we got some a knit hat coming. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got that coming. So uh, we're really excited to have these guys on board as a sponsor. So uh, get uh, get down to check them out on Facebook. I believe they're on Instagram. Uh, check them out, man. They got the best hats, I think, in the Fox Valley, if not in the state. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, get down to 920 Hat Company on social media and check them out. All right, man. We are here. What We're up? live on. I think I got it on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I took out Twitter because nobody watches this shit on Twitter. What is Twitter <laughs> anymore? It doesn't even exist. This is right now, right? <laughs> we are joined uh, for another episode of Vision Quest Podcast with an awesome guest. This guy has always been exciting to watch, man. I mean, there's a reason why you have the nickname you do, the highlight reel, the human highlight reel, yeah. Reese Humphrey. Give it up for him. Appreciate you coming oh, on, dude. Yeah. I appreciate oh, it. Appreciate you coming on. My ca- camera's going all crazy because it's it's all motion censored. But I appreciate you joining us, man. It's been kind of a juggle, right? I mean, kind of getting this thing going with the holidays and things like right, that. Right. But so we want to talk to you. Um, you are also a person that has has always interested us as far as you know what what your story was behind wrestling, the things that you've been through, the all, all, just everything. I mean, I've watched some matches with guys from Iowa that burned me up that you beat, you know, just because I was an Iowa fan for so long. Right. And then yeah. as I, as an adult, I grew up and I was like, you know, all wrestling's pretty good. You know, you yeah, just gotta, right, right. You just yeah. gotta watch one. I definitely so some losses we, to the Iowa boys as well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Everybody's got something to, uh, got something to offer. So when we talk about everything, I was kind of talking to you about this in the beginning, we talk about everything from the start to the end. So, you know, we kind of dig into, uh, you know, just some of the weirder things that maybe someone doesn't ask, but I'm going to start off with, cause I have a guy that's around here that knows you well, uh, his, his name is Zach, um, Zach Pearson. Uh, I wouldn't say he knows you well, well, but he's from Indiana, which is where you're from. Yeah. So I was a little surprised. So where, where are you from in Indiana? From Indianapolis. I went to a high school called Lawrence North. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we were we were very good. Zero recruiting. Just my dad kind of 
took the two middle schools and coached them up a little bit. My brother went to the one middle school and then we moved. So I went to the other one. Those two feed into the high school, Lawrence North, and we ended up winning two state titles. We had seven guys ranked number one in the state at one point, and bummer, I was the only one to win. Uh, so, so that was uh, we had six losses in the semifinals. We went one for seven, and so yeah. that that was crazy. But uh, we had a very good team, and we won the dual state tournament my junior wow. year. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Was that like right off the bat? Right when your dad was he was that right when he started coaching? Or had he been coaching there for a while? No, he just got there. He was just helping. We had a head coach, and he just helped. And our okay. head coach was awesome. His name was Brett Krausor, and he was a guy with no ego. He knew that my dad had better technique than him so he ran the team and ran the practices when it was technique time my dad would step in teach the technique and he would help me and the guys around me probably the most and then some other some other guys even the guys who weren't as good they had some really good fundamentals because of my dad's basic technique and uh, I've said that he's the guy who created the rules of wrestling head up back straight hips in and pressuring your opponent that really stems from from my dad and then him coaching Brandon Slay and the Schultz brothers and yeah. all those guys at Fox Catcher along the way, it kind of trickled down. And then everybody knows to keep your head up and back straight and hips in. <laughs> it's like a, a staple of it. And so when I say that, people are like, there's no way. You, like, imagine being the guy that that said that you created head up. And I'm Made like, that bar, you know, he, he's that old. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's that guy. So it's and a lot of people may not know this. You don't just come from any average dude that was around the sport of wrestling. Your dad is pretty decorated. Um, and again, I, I don't kind of, not everybody knows. So let's kind of go. Your dad was a, he was an Olympian, correct? He was a four time world team member, never an Olympian. So, okay. Okay. It's, it's the Humphrey curse. We can't get it done. So I was, it's a little background on me. I was on the team in 2011, yep. 2013, lost two clinches to lose London and okay. beat that guy in 11 and 13. Uh, he went on to win the bronze Coleman Scott. And then, I... uh, yeah. And so, and then, so no London. And then I made the team in 2015, right before Rio. And then they took my weight out. So we went from seven weight classes to six <sighs> and they didn't change the weights. They just took out 60 kilos. And I was like, this will be great. I'll be able to wrestle bigger guys. And then I started wrestling the bigger guys. I was like, come on, man, where's my weight? Uh, but my dad, yeah. <laughs> so we have a little curse going around us, but sure. my dad was the two-time Olympic head coach once for Canada in 84. And this is kind of different. And I just found this out recently, but He wasn't the USA wrestling coach. So like Zadik is the coach and then Zadik will be the Olympic head coach. They would always bring somebody in and that guy would coach the Olympics and there would still be a team USA coach. So it's, it's different than I I had actually viewed it in the past, but he coached the Olympic team in Canada in 84 and then the Olympic team in 88 and uh, had one of the best Olympics for Canada and then probably the best Olympics ever for team USA. They won. Yeah. 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 And, and so again, you, you didn't just come up in some average house when it comes to wrestling, man. I mean, you, yeah. you had to put to you. So, yeah, but, I, uh, but I also, I started in sixth grade. So right. I no fill my shoes. My dad was in sales. I didn't know that he was a wrestler. Uh, not, not like that. Not on that level, which yeah. is probably the greatest gift he ever gave me because yeah. it's so, so hard to do wrestling for somebody else. And yeah. if you're always constantly trying to fill those shoes and, and later I figured it out. Uh, obviously, but when he first came to the first practice I ever was at, he, I was like, dad, you're good at pushups, but what are you going to do coaching here? You know, yeah. I had no idea. Like so <laughs> totally Jedi mind tricked me into thinking he was a normal dude, uh, but I'm sure he was teaching me head up back straight hips in while I was fist fighting my brother, you know, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So, and I've seen that a lot, you know, we talked to some guys that are parents not now, and they do the same thing. They're like, I'm not pushing him to to do this. And I think you find that a lot of the, whether it's a high, just like a higher level athlete parent in general, because they understand the pressure, they get how intense it can be. And and it's tough. I mean, you're talking about wrestling on top of that. I mean, it's not, it's not easy. You're talking about filling shoes, man. I couldn't imagine if I knew about that right away, you know, coming up and like, Oh man, you know, everybody talking to you or something. But as you came up in the household, where you must have played other sports than I take it, right? So you're yep. soccer, baseball, gymnastics. things like that. What was the when first I was sport? Very young gymnastics when I was young. Okay, and that's probably where all the flips and all that stems from. And then yeah. I played hockey for almost ten years. Yeah, we were in no kidding. League. Yeah, so I was 
Shit. the smallest guy on the ice, but uh, we played in very, very competitive leagues. We played in the Chicago League and we played in the Michigan League. And then my last year, we played in the AAA Canadian League. I went from scoring 63 goals my second to last season to scoring three. So uh, everybody hit puberty before me and they were all going from, you know, 100 pounds to they were like 180, 200. And I'm like, yeah. Five pounds out there, like it, it became a different game. <laughs> so yeah, it's time to move on to a weight class sport. <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. So that's that's interesting. So was I mean, again, because of your dad's, you know, things that he had done in the past and where he'd been, where was there was there instillment of that um give it all or don't give it at all kind of attitude? He, was it or was, was so it kind of he was so hands off on, on motivation, wow. like on pushing me like that. And yeah. so I think that was just in me. Uh, okay. It's yeah. not, it's not really in my brother. And, and so you got to just let your kids be who they are. Yeah. And, you know, he taught all my brother, all the technique and all that. But my, my brother, he wasn't quite the go getter, like trying to push himself. I was waking up. If I woke up in the middle of the night, I would do a hundred pushups. Like no one's telling me to do that. It's just, it was in me. Right. I wanted to always constantly better myself physically. My brother, a little more cerebral and try and better himself uh, in, in, in that sense. And so uh, everybody gets pushed different ways. And so you kind of just let your kids be who they want to be and then just kind of guide them and help them. And that's yeah. how I've been treating my kids. My son wants to wrestle and, uh, Jersey youth wrestling is very, very tough. It's different than Indiana. I was undefeated right away. No one had to tell me anything. I was just, I had it. And yeah. because I had an older brother who beat me up every single day and we literally <laughs> fist fought every day and then yeah. I'd cry. And then my dad would come in teach me some technique. I'd be like, I'll get him tomorrow. And so, <laughs> so without that presence, it's a little bit different. And Jersey wrestling is really tough, but we're, we're in there scrapping. My son was an all American and freestyling and, and folk style, but nice. uh, always trying to get better. And uh, yeah, he's got a bright future, but he's, he's still got his hands full all the time. So, so when you, you started out in, you know, hockey was, a, was a long time sport of yours. And I, I would assume you tried some other sports on the side as well, but yeah. when you first kind of got your taste of, I, uh, even in hockey, just kind of like winning, was it, was there an adrenaline rush for you, especially because I scored goals. I played soccer. Yeah. Every time I scored, that was a rush, right? Just yeah. knowing that you just completed, you know, you, you just scored and then you got more coming. What what was that like for you, especially as, you know, no, no pressure, but you're driving yourself. And it's interesting to hear that you say you're doing 100 push-ups in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. you know, just on your own. So you must have been surrounded with some pretty good guys as far as just guys your age, you know, yeah. athletes your age. Were a lot of those guys kind of, did they stick with hockey and kind of take it further? Uh, yeah. after you left in pros or anything like that? Yeah, I'm not sure about hockey. Uh, yeah. I kind of lost the touch with those guys when I moved into to wrestling. I'm sure some of them, I mean, it was a very, very competitive league. We were yeah. definitely the best team in Indiana. They actually oh. didn't let us play in the state tournament our last couple of years. They said, you guys, if you played, we don't play. Yeah. We're like, all right. So we did that the one year we played. We beat everybody by 12 goals, and then they're like, we let them have their thing. So yeah, uh, we had some very, very good guys on the team, but I'm not really sure how far they made it. I'm sure some guys played in college, but we were pretty young. You know, I stopped yeah. in seventh, to eighth grade. And okay. So there's still a okay. big, big gap from there to no matter how good you were. Right. Yeah. I, I bet right. some of them did pretty well. Okay. So you got, you got into wrestling, you said about sixth grade and there was no pressure. There was nothing to be expected. And you're just saying that you kind of had, you kind of had your way with it when you first started. Where, where were you, where did you stick in Indiana? Did your dad take you to national tournaments and things like that right away? Or was he just kind of seeing how much you liked it first? And then it grew into that to explain kind of the dynamic of how wrestling really kind of creeped in. Yeah. So I was undefeated in the middle school season. It, nothing crazy. You know, I don't yeah. really remember how tough the competition was, yeah. but uh, I wanted more, you know, I wanted to see what was out there and, we always were freestyle guys. So we were always wrestling through the summer and that's where I got probably the best competition. Cause we started to go to the national tournaments. I would win the, the freestyle state tournament, win Greco. And then I remember the first eye opener, I went to the schoolboy duels and there wasn't that many national tournaments back then. There's yeah. so many different tough competitions at these this day. But yeah. I remember going to the schoolboy duels and I went two and 12. There was no two and out. 
I went two and twelve after being pretty much undefeated up to that point. Yeah, yeah. And we're crying under the bleachers after every single one. Like, God dang, I got to wrestle again. I'm fucking lost twenty times already. And so, and so uh, that was the big eye opener of that. There is another level for me, and it happened in a, a tidal wave. And so yeah. it was it was humbling, but also really exciting that. Yeah, there is another level out there and I have to get a lot better and I got to work and it didn't crush me. It crushed me that day, of course, yeah. but it didn't crush me. My dad's such a good motivator in those moments. Like, well, we got to get better. This is what we got to do. Here's a couple of things you can work on. Here's what you did well. Yeah. And then uh, I it, I got a new motivation for the sport and I got excited for that tournament the next year. I ended up going like 13 and three the, the next year. And so I, I made a big jump, but uh yeah, those experiences are really important. Totally. I, I couldn't agree more. I think I think watching just, you know, my son coming up and, and not, I wrestled when I was younger, but I was not at a level that even he's at, at 15. You know, I was that chubby kid who played, I was strong in the legs, I was fat in the upper body. So I was ready to roll down a soccer field. I was not ready to roll in a wrestling mat. Yeah. But just kind of seeing the progression that these kids, especially like you were talking about, these guys have so many events now so many things that they can go to. And I think I've probably said it a thousand times when I was younger, there was one tournament I knew about. It was in Iowa. My brother and those guys all traveled down to it. I think it was freestyle too. I don't even think it was folk style. And it was crazy. It was one of the, it just all of a sudden now when, once my sons were in it, it was like, there's all these tournaments everywhere, mm -hmm. new way, things like that. So as you guys, as you started, you had the, you know, the rough weekend and whatnot, but what solidified, because you're having success. So what solidified the thing for you to stay into wrestling after something? I wouldn't say it's devastating, but you're like, holy crap, I have to work more. Some kids would be like, I'm done. It you know, was so easy for me because there was so much success all the time. It was one yeah. day that I yeah. kind of chalk it up to a bad tournament, but sure. my dad didn't let me do that. It wasn't, yeah. I didn't feel good that day. Such it was because yeah. be these kids are better than you. Yeah. We got to get better. And so yeah. it was easy to stay into it because everybody loves getting their hand raised. You know, right. so my son wanted to, he's a great flipper on the trampoline. He can do a quad back. He's done a quint back. So one bounce, five flips. He's done that. Yeah, I could show you the video. Uh, and so, yeah, it's pretty insane how athletic he is there, but he's still trying to figure out the feel of wrestling, on where to go and how to, yeah. he turns the wrong way sometimes. So he doesn't quite have it just naturally. So, but he listens well and he works really hard. But, it was easy for me to stay in it because I was having success all the time. I was the yeah. man around my, my middle school, at least in sport. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't have to keep trying to come back. I wanted to. You wanted to. So as you're, kind of, as you're getting older, you're getting into the high school days, because I mean, like you said, middle school is middle school. There's not a whole lot to kind of put, put a hat on. I mean, there might be a tournament that you, that you kind of probably took pride in or something like that back in, back in the day. But as you go into high school, kind of getting out of middle school, how, how much did you weigh your freshman year? So, yeah, it was it was close call for me. So I was 70, 75, 80 as an eighth grader, which my son is is 100 pounds right now. And he's in yeah. seventh grade. So big difference from from where I was. I was the smallest kid. I was the hairiest kid. <laughs> it, was a, it, was, it was an uphill battle for your boy. <laughs> but in that yeah. summer, I got really focused because I knew the weight class was 103 back then. Uh, and I ended up weighing 104. But um, so I gained 24 pounds and then we yeah. had a state camp on our team in high school. He cut probably 15 pounds to make 103 his senior year. And I lost him in double overtime four times oh. to make the team. So I'm JV, but I ended up having to beat my best friend off the team at 112. So I was giving up a ton of weight there too. I, I qualified for the state tournament, but I had Angel Escobedo first round. Oh, yeah. And uh, ended up losing that. But then I won three state titles after that. And, uh, the rest is history. Yeah. Rest is history. So you're as you're as you're climbing through high school because I think I think it's always interesting to find out like you know where who was your toughest opponent and who was the one guy that you ran into that always had your number. Some guys usually have that, especially in high school. A lot of guys have it in college. Who was Angel? Was the only one that had your number, or was there another guy that was always kind of behind you? Yeah, so heels? yeah, Angel was just a one match, but he was yeah. undefeated in high school. He was the superstar. I had my eyes set on him, even though I was giving up weight. I I believed I could beat him, yeah. and then he kind of beat me up. So there was like once again levels. Uh, but the real guy that 
I literally never beat was a kid named Mac Ryder in college. Okay. Um, I've been majored five times in my life. Mac Ryder was four of them. Oh, <laughs> shit. He tech me, pinned me, majored me, and something else. Like, God dang, this dude, I can't do anything to what? him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, I, matchups are a real thing, but, man, this dude had my number, and every yeah. time I thought I was going to beat him, every every single time. And That's I just, awesome. I just, it'd be close, and then it would just all crash. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, he taught me a lot. You ever run into him after college? Oh, yeah, he's my best friend. Nice, yeah, nice. No, Isn't that just – that's why I love this sport so much, man. Like, uh-huh. it – it brings a lot of people together. Even sometimes people that probably didn't like each other at some point, they come together, they just start talking. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's it's tough when you're battling against somebody. You can. Yeah. I, I never hated my opponent. Some guys have to hate him to to beat him. But this dude, he knows he has my number. You know, and he's he's big. He's a little out of shape now, but he fucking knows he's got. He me. knows. <laughs> he knows he's got me. So he always wants to come up to me and talk to me, and and I love it, man. I have no hard feelings at all. But yeah, right. He definitely knows he's got my number, so he wants to be extra friendly just so he could. He that's goes, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's Reese. Yeah, I got him. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> this championship match is not a problem. Yeah, I got this. Not even close. <laughs> So as you're kind of going through high school, were you already like freshman year? Were you thinking I want to go to college and wrestle? This is what I want to do in school. Yeah, it was always. already already in there, huh? Yeah, always. I remember in sixth grade, I was in a home ec class. I drew 2004 Olympic Games with Humphrey <laughs> on the back, and so yeah, it was always a, a goal of mine to be definitely wrestling okay. college. And obviously, I had no idea how much better I had to get. I just thought that I had won some matches on the middle school scene. Yeah. I was going to be that guy. But yeah. well, it well, turns sure. out I forgot about the curse that the Humphreys can't make it there. So, <laughs> it, You know, it, it's kind of interesting. And watching your style of wrestling is – it was always fun because you you knew – I mean, you knew what you were doing. And I think a lot of – obviously, like I said, you had – you had the the knowledge behind it, the basics knowledge, just in the good basics knowledge. And I think a lot of people miss the the base of what is needed to be able to be just just a, a good wrestler, a good sound, you know, wrestler with, with basic technique. Yeah. I mean, you can win championships, right? I mean Yeah, that's so, all we talk about. So I, I coach yeah. at the NJRTC, which is out of Princeton, and these guys yeah. are the smartest, most intelligent athletes i've ever been around and so yeah. i can talk to them a little bit differently but yeah for, for them and for really everybody it's breaking it down to making things sound really simple and yeah. so einstein was a guy that's associated with princeton and yep. he can make the theory of relativity sound simple that's right. what a good coach should be able to do make it make sense to somebody a coach that teaches a lot of moves and puts your hands in these specific places it's so hard to comprehend when you're out there yeah. you give them concepts on staying athletic staying balanced not fading off to the side because you're not as powerful there you want to be yeah. in positions that you're athletic and can do explosive things you can relate it to a guy like nate jackson who's six three down to a guy who i used to coach tyler graff or matt kolodzik who these guys yep. are five 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 three and so they, they all have different strengths and different weaknesses. And if you give them the philosophy of balance and, and athleticism and a little bit of pressure and the release of pressure, all these things make you so much better. And then it always goes back to the golden rules of wrestling, head up, back, straight, hips in. <laughs> there it is again. There it is again. Yeah, and that's that's so fun. cool to be able to have that in a room, especially at an RTC, to be able to – and you know these guys. I mean, yeah. so that's the, that's kind of the, the, the part for me is that I kind of want to dig into a little bit here is kind of going through high school is – looking into colleges, right? So you're getting in sophomore, junior year, you're getting recruited. How soon did, was that right after your sophomore year? Were you getting those phone calls, letters, whatnot? Mm-hmm. However, however yeah. it was back then. I mean, phone I, I can't calls remember. and letters. I remember talking for hours down there like, God, I can't get away from this. And I didn't have a smartphone back then. You know, I'm right. pretty old. I'm pretty old. So I just corded phone, throw, you're wrapped yeah, around in the cord, kitchen. I'm stuck there. I'm <laughs> twirling the thing around. Like, I got to go. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I'm yeah. Right. Shut up. <laughs> and that's that's basically awesome. what it came down to. I said, my dad. Uh, so Russ Hellickson was the coach at Ohio State, and yeah. he told my dad that he could come be on the staff or at least coach the club there. Yeah. And uh, so that was the deciding factor for me. My dad was like, "I'm going to go do this, but you definitely don't have to." Yeah. And the final three were Ohio State, Michigan, which is pretty crazy, and then right. Oklahoma. But Oklahoma sent a letter and didn't make those calls and the letter got there by the time that 
you committed. Uh, I had already committed because I took a visit to OU and I really liked it. I liked the guys. We got in a fist fight, which I thought was cool at the That's time. Cool. <laughs> so, That's pretty sweet. It was pretty cool. A recruiting visit, everybody got together. I'm like, man, these are my kind of people. And uh, <laughs> yeah, man, when I, OU would have ended up being a really good place for me, but yeah. um, but I ended up going to Ohio State. But yeah, OU it would have been Hayeswinkle, then me, yep. then Tion Ware. And then Tion would have graduated, and I could have moved to the 41 when Ohio State. I kind of got stuck at 133 because we yeah. had janitors. Yeah. And even, even if I could have beat Jay, which who knows, yeah. uh, it, it made no sense because Jay and would have had Lance Palmer ahead of him. So we had Oof. the perfect lineup, but I was it wasn't perfect for me. I was stuck right. at 33. So I said, never again. I'll never beat 33 again. And then they moved to freestyle night before weigh-ins. I made it for like the next 10 years. <laughs> that's awesome. That's God, awesome. I hate myself. <laughs> so, is when you're kind of going through the recruitment process, your, your dad got the offer, and and once you get into college, in, in just kind of facing it, was what was that like? Because you talked about levels and and just from middle school to high school and things like mm-hmm. that. Did you get a big smack in the face going into the college room? Uh, not so much. Okay, uh, I expected it to be very hard but we were 11th in the big 10 out of 11 when i signed uh i just knew that we had jaggers and tj and right some really yeah. good guys right around yeah. me that i knew that yeah. my dad could coach and i had these really great partners we were going to be great and then russ left or got fired uh, as tom mm-hmm. ryan came in and tom brought a whole new staff and then we just jumped levels but we jumped levels pretty immediately, but it was all Russ's recruits. Lance Palmer was a Russ yeah. Ellison recruit, me and Jay. And then Tom Ryan brought over Mike Basillo. And those guys, four guys, really led this, the team to a national runner-up finish. And we were 50th at the national scoring like one point, And then we got eighth, second, something else up in the top ten. So, okay. uh, yeah, it was a, it was a it needed change, but it was also a really good timing for Tom to come in. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm kind of interested in where did you guys go for tournaments and things like that back then? Because like you see now where, um, you know, like Iowa goes to the Midlands and then some guys go down to the Southern scuffle. What did you guys have? That was a constant. Yeah. We were at the Southern scuffle and we would always do Vegas. Okay. Okay. The only tournament I've ever won (laughs) in college and yeah, which is crazy. I won a couple like Michigan state opens, but we only really wrestled in the scuffle. And I don't even know if we did that for very long. I think they stopped going to any Christmas tournament. Uh, so we'd wrestle in Vegas, the Big Tens, and the Nationals. And so, okay. Yeah, okay. So, Kept it so, simple. Yeah. And I had to beat Kyle Dake to win that. So, I mean, it you was. Kept it simple. Yeah. All right. It was just every college tournament was a grind. <laughs> and that, now there's a couple more in there, but still, it's not very many. Uh, you're winning yeah. tournaments. You got a chance to win the Nationals. Yeah. So I noticed that something, this is just me. Maybe it's not how you feel about it. But I think freestyle seemed to be your favorite. Yeah, of course. Dude, just watching you compete in freestyle mm-hmm. is insane. Because yeah. you can let it fly, right? I mean, there's certain things you get in trouble with in folk style that you're not going to get in freestyle. So watching you just let it go, that's when I really started paying attention once I saw you competing yeah. in freestyle. Because I was like, dude, this guy's just letting it rip. Like a lot of these guys are trying to stay in a pocket and trying to wrestle inside of whatever their comfort zone is. Mm-hmm. You would leave your comfort zone so many times when you wrestled and successful. Sometimes it didn't work, but it's not like you lost yeah. or anything. Uh-huh. What, where did you get that portion from? I mean, th- that's confidence, right? I mean, that's not just yeah, a dad. There's thing, a lot of confidence. Awesome. And what people don't understand is I did a lot of upper body stuff with duck thunders and lateral drops and step arounds. But okay. I, drill, I drilled that stuff. And yeah. People neglect upper body. And so if you can drill it and get confident in there, it's, it was all really high risk or high reward, low risk. People sure. think that upper body is such a high risk, high reward, but it was low risk for me because I always knew how to bail out of it and yeah. I could send it. And if I had it to the breaking point, if I got past that, I'd get it. And if I didn't, I'd back out of it. And so I could constantly threaten those things. I could challenge people and get them really tired in positions that they weren't used to so and all because I drilled that stuff and nobody does it. And I don't really know why. Um, and we, we drill it all the time. Um, at the NJRTC out of Princeton. Yeah. And it's, it's really important stuff because it's half of the body is up. Yeah, there. It, it is literally half of my attacks are upper body and the other half are down low. And if you can threaten both, you can be more dangerous. You're and dangerous. Much more dynamic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah. So what was, what was the, uh, when you took your first trip to Ohio state, what was that like for you? Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. And so I, I took a couple trips out there. We saw, so I had, 
50 yard line tickets from my sophomore year to my senior year of high school Damn. at the horseshoe. So that was a selling point as well. So whenever <laughs> I wanted, it was, it was always a cool thing. And I went to high school with two really good basketball players, Greg Oden, who okay. got the number one in the NBA over Kevin Durant and then yep. was plagued with injuries. So it didn't work out. And yeah. then Mike Conley, who is, I believe still in the league, one of the most highest paid athletes. He's a point guard and, he was drafted number four. So two of the yeah. best guys. And then they went to Ohio State, too. So every time we sat 50-yard line, they were there, which was a, an in with the cool kids. You know? <laughs> so That's right. Me and my two right. high school buddies went to all those Ohio State-Michigan games. It was a great rivalry games, right, 50-yard line, third row. And, yeah. uh, and then we'd hang out with my boys, and it would be a blast always. And so I knew that Ohio State was going to be a really good time. Those yeah. guys ended up going to Ohio State as well. Um, nice. those two basketball guys and so it was always a really cool thing and yeah. it, it all worked out that's awesome i mean you're to be able to be at a big 10 school number one because like just watching the kids now that I mean, the dual team that i had all these kids now are starting to graduate you know and some of them are just becoming seniors and they're all really successful and seeing some of these guys signing to big 10 schools and big 12 schools is, is really exciting to me at some point though is was there ever in you can have a love for the sport and I had a love for soccer. Don't get me wrong. You can have a love for a sport. I always ask everybody, even as you get into college, was there ever a point in college where you're like, I, maybe I just need to call it. Maybe this is, just, I'm, I love it. I love the sport, but man, it's kicking the shit out of me. And I yeah. don't know if I'm going to be as successful as I want to. Was yeah. that ever on your brain? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Uh, cutting too much weight, taking a loss, you know, we had those four really good guys and maybe one other good guy. If any of us lost, we'd lose a duel. So it was so much pressure all the time. I yeah. was miserable cutting weight. I had no friends, you know, just it was tough during the season. So yeah. it, it felt like a lose-lose. Like I have to win and I should win by more or I would lose and the whole team would be let down. And so yeah. there is, and you're cutting weight, you're not eating. It's, it, it's miserable during the whole year. I'm like, why am I doing this? Yeah. But I, I do love the sport, and yeah. uh, there's a big part of grinding through those really miserable times that when you step out of it, you're like, man, it's really cool to be all in for something. Yeah. I have it mean that much, but I say if you don't want to quit wrestling at some point, you're not doing it hard enough. Sure. But it's just such a grueling sport, and losing out there one-on-one, -on -one, there's nobody to blame but yourself. It's really hard for an 18-year-old, even a 25-year-old to handle, let alone a 15-year-old. Yep. And so – uh, it, it's just a really difficult thing. And so if you don't want to quit at some point, you're probably not giving it your all. And so it's totally part of the process and just stay in there. Yeah. yeah. So what are some of the more memorable matches that you remember from college or even, uh -huh. even tournaments? Yep. So beating Kyle Dake was a really funny match for me because it was the quarterfinals. It was in Vegas. My whole family was there. None of them showed up. Just my wife was the only one to make it. Really? <laughs> or the, actually she didn't make it my my dad was the only one she, my dad was the only one that made it everybody else was hung over slept <laughs> in. and i go it's cool guys you didn't miss much i beat a freshman in overtime yeah that was it, it ends up being all the biggest win of all time <laughs> yeah. yes yeah, i didn't wrestle very well you know <laughs> so, what, yeah. are, what are you gonna do what are you gonna do you know you wrestled one of the best guys ever in the ever. sport and yeah, just yeah, happened to beat him up. Yeah. it was just some little blonde hair boy back then <laughs> boy could he scrap though yeah right <laughs> uh, yeah so then uh, i mean ncaa finals is a is a match that i constantly think about not so much anymore i thought about it pretty much every day until i won the u.s open yeah and so yeah you know, just realizing that it's over and you didn't get that goal done and you won't forever and so yeah. i think about it i think about it you know they do the ncaa they so like all americans stand up and I always stand up and I know what's coming. I go, a national champion, stay standing. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah and so, right on, uh, right on. You know, so we I switch ourselves a little bit, but yeah, there's a couple matches that still stand out. I kind of wonder, I, you're very, so you're from Indiana. Mm. You are very New Jersey. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, just the way. <laughs> Yes. Yes. You're very New Jersey. My wife, it's, it's kind of funny because my wife is, she's Sicilian, but her family's from up North, but it's just kind of funny to see you fit in. Like there's nothing wrong with it. It's like, it's yeah. like your environment. What got you there? What, what took you to, to New Jersey? 
So Joe Dubuque, who is the head coach now at Princeton, he's the one who called me. He saw one of my stupid videos. I was teaching technique or throwing some kids around or doing something, and he saw it, and he called me. And I, I used to get these calls uh, every once in a while from RTCs that would want to bring me out, but the offers weren't anything crazy. Yeah. Uh, and so my offer kept getting pushed up to what I actually would want to move because I was living out in California. My brother was my oh, assistant okay. coach, coaching for Titan Mercury Youth, and I was just doing what I wanted to do because – College coaching really didn't appeal to me. It's, there's so much work that's not wrestling, and I just love wrestling and want to do wrestling and want to be able to do all the side missions that I'm that I'm trying to chase after. And you need a little bit more time than being a head coach or a yeah. coach even. And so all that pencil pushing is not for me. And so I just want to coach wrestling and travel the world. And this was a really good opportunity. Yeah. And I hung up the phone. I'm like, yeah, it's just another one of those RTC jobs. And my wife started crying. I said, Princeton, New Jersey. And she started crying. I'm like, what's going on? She goes, you got to go look. You're not going to look at Princeton, New Jersey. And she really didn't like California. And so I'm like, I'll, <laughs> take the visit. I'll take the visit. And so I took the visit and flew out to Jersey and man, what a town. Everybody yeah. thinks dirty New Jersey, but no way, bro. It's the garden state. It's beautiful in Princeton and where I live in Pennington. We're yeah. an hour from the city. We're 40 minutes from Philly. We're an hour from the beach. It's like, it's a dream. I love it. Wrong. New Jersey is, is home for me and my family. And so, uh, yeah, grew up in Indiana, went to Ohio State. Went That's to awesome. A little bit, but Jersey's home. Mm -hmm. That's and, and again, like I said, you fit in. Like I can't, I can't think of another person that's from the Midwest, right? Right. <laughs> that can just hop on out to Jersey and be Jersey, right? Yeah, like, yeah. But you're a character, and that's always been kind of how you were. Even watching your wrestling too, like the flip that I know pissed Dan Dennis off after you beat him. He's yeah. like, ah, I hate that crowd. I was like, dude, he's excited, man. He can do a flip, yeah, like for real. Flip. Yeah. Well, story <laughs> about that. So it's. It wasn't the flip. I did a break dance. Oh, did you? Yeah. So I did a break dance. I did it after I won my first state title. It all went great. I thought, this is cool. I'm going to do it for winning the world team trials. Yeah. I beat, I beat Dan. Uh, Dan is, the, I'm one of the guys Dan could never beat. He <laughs> he would be beating me and I'd, I'd headlock him. Like I just had his number for whatever reason. He, yeah. As awesome as he was. He was just a guy that I, I had his number. I had it. But I beat him. And I did the break dance, but the coaches had both gotten out of their chairs. And so as I'm spinning around, I'm looking for my dad and Roselli, but I can't see them. One, I'm spinning real fast. And two, they're gone. They're out of the chairs. So I just like, fuck it, I'm pointing at one of these chairs. I pointed at the Brands Brothers chairs. Oh. And just, bam! Oh, just like this. And then I realized <laughs> <laughs> Tom and Terry were sitting behind it. I go, no. And so you can kind of see in the video, I, I get up like kind of shamefully. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's not what I was going for. So that's probably why he doesn't like that so much. Yeah. Those guys don't like it in general because they lost. That's about it. It's that's a sour taste true. in your mouth. But yeah, that made it a little bit worse. So <laughs> so that's sorry. sorry, Dan. Dan and I are actually, we work together a little bit because he's the Hawkeye RTC yep. coach. And yeah. So when we go overseas, everything's always confusing. Dan and I are two of the guys that go scout stuff and figure stuff nice. out. There's what he learned on his trip. I try and help him and it, it makes it a lot more simple. So it's good to have that relationship. Did you, did you ever have any overseas experience as, as you know, in college or around, you know, in your school days, where did you go? I've been, I don't know, 30, 40 countries at this point. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So from my U23 days where I yeah. met guys like Keith Gavin, Terrell Delagna, JD Bergman. It's one of my first interactions with those guys. Okay. Um, Greece, Italy for those trips. And then the team USA trips. Yeah, countless Belarus, Ukraine, nice, Russia, okay. numerous times, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan. I mean, everywhere. Yeah. You traveled. You traveled. Cuba. Yeah, some of the better trips. Cuba has always been a good time. You got a couple stamps in your passport, nonetheless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Okay, so when you kind of got done with you know with college, going into the RTC, where what was your thought process kind of as as going into an RTC? I mean, you. You're not necessarily, you know, heading up a, a college program, but you're still the coach. You're still the dude, right? So you yeah. got to have some some type of a of a program. What did you? How long did that take you to put something like that together? Because I know just 
just taking the test with safe sport to get my USA wrestling coaching. <laughs> it's not easy, you know? So yeah, I can't yeah. imagine the, the, what you had to put together. Was that something you're like, all right, you called those guys back. You're like, yeah, I'll do this. Do you just start working on a game plan or do you um, kind of, is that something that sits in your head just because you come like this from... podcast, man, I just wing it. Just wing I'm it. just wing it. it rip. Now I'm a lot more organized. These Princeton guys and the athletes and the coaches, they're really good mentors. And so they taught me a lot about being more organized and, yeah. and getting everything scheduled and laid out and i'm actually a much better coach because of it but yeah. in the beginning for a long time i would basically train alongside my guys and and wing it and uh it just randomly worked out really well we had some we were the bad news bears man for a little bit it was nate jackson and i we were the nate jackson rtc the nj rtc yeah. for a little bit and then we brought on pat downey straight from the streets basically yeah paid, paid him next to nothing in the beginning and then uh, he made the world team. Tyler Graff was a guy who was yep. – um, The he Badger. Had, he had left a couple programs because he wasn't happy with that. And then so he found a spot with us and, boom, made the world team. So we had two guys on the world team in my second year as a freestyle coach. And I won coach of the year, which caught some eyes, uh, but still very difficult to get some guys to train in Princeton. And so – um, now we're just slowly building, but I think our reputation is that we are going to get the most out of these guys. we got a guy named Quincy Monday right now who has really stepped on the yeah. scene in a brand new way. He's jumped levels um, just with really basic stuff that is really helping him. And he's very hard worker, super cerebral. He, he listens very well. Sometimes he looks at me dead in the eyes and I'm a little get, I get a little intimidated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he's double like me or something, but such a yeah. great guy to be around. All these guys are really, really good to be around. Nate Jackson, I, I really think could, could be the Olympian. You he's guys up. all just killed it. At yeah, this and then, uh, we got Marsteller who, who beat JB last year. And so yes. we have a very, very good team right now. And we have some good recruits looking to fill the spot for the guys that step out of the scene in 2024. Yeah. So uh, yeah. things are looking up for the NJRTC, and I, I really just enjoy what I do, travel the world and teach wrestling with really good people. It's awesome. So that's the RTC. Let's talk about this podcast a little bit you got going on, man. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's talk. No genre. Yeah, oh, look at this. We got the whole setup. We got, got the same uh, thing. Yeah. Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, we're having a blast with it. Me and my former athlete, CJ Brucky. Uh, we do a podcast and it's no genre. So it's anything that's straight off the top of the dome. It's going to be wrestling content, MMA, fighting stuff, music yeah. a lot. We do a lot of music on the podcast. Yes, you we do. Frank Yeager on the other day and he was rapping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've had some really cool. We had a brain surgeon on. Um, yes. All it out at youtube.com slash highlight Humphrey, or you can find us on Instagram at no genre underscore underscore, and then make up a couple other characters. You'll find it. All that other stuff in there, yeah, we'll <laughs> sprinkle it, and then I'll put some of that stuff in the because this will be audio form, and I'll put links to all that too. Yeah, yeah, uh, for you guys out there. Um, mm -hmm. so what what kind of uh, what kind you're a fly by the seat of your pants kind of guy? What type of things are coming up in the future for the NJRTC? I mean, you guys yeah, got a pretty good so. class around by you already. Yeah, Where do you so guys we, feed from? What'd you say? Where do you guys feed from? Like, what athletes from? Because a lot of the RTC guys aren't just Princeton, are they? Yeah, there's a couple of them. It's it's anybody that we can get, but we're looking okay. at guys who are very explosive and then let yeah. me teach you how to do the hand fighting and positional stuff yeah. uh, would be the number one guys that we're going for. But anybody that wins and wants to come over here, come get it. Because, cool. uh, yeah, I, I really believe that I can help any style of athlete. And so I, I attract mostly my friends. Uh, are going to be the first people that I reach out to, but yeah. I, I'm making new friends all the time when we recruit anybody. They come over and they see the vibe that we have. We, we really do. It's not a show. We have a blast in the room every single day. We're cracking jokes and it's really, really fun to place to be. Uh, and wrestling such a grind. You got to have that. And so we're going to Croatia uh, January 6th. And nice. then we're going to Nice, France right after that. Nate Jackson and I are going on a double tour. Chance and Quincy are just doing Croatia. And then yeah. Kolodzic and Yaya Thomas are going to do France. And Nate's going to do both. And so we'll be gone for a good 15 days overseas, which will be really exciting, but we got some really exciting stuff coming up with no genre. We yeah. uh, have a new EP that's probably going to drop at the end of January. Uh, we did the music video in Times Square. It's called anybody want to dance. So we were dancing out there. We got uh, we actually, the story is really cool. So yeah. we did, we're doing a promotional video for Princeton wrestling as well. We did a song. They asked us to do a song for the home duel. So we cranked that out in about a week. And now we did a music video for that at 8 a.m. 
went to the city, New York City, to do a podcast with a, a financial company, which ended up being a blast. And then I was supposed to meet with somebody to do the adult wrestling. We're fundraising a little bit for, yeah. for the adult wrestling classes that we're yeah. doing. And they canceled. So we hit up our media team and said, hey, you want to shoot this video while we're in the city? Boom. They met us in the city. We're like, okay, so now what are we going to do? Once again, we have no no plan. <laughs> so, Creative juices start yeah, flowing. They yeah, just start going. Where let's hit up some of those b boys that are out there street performing. Let's yeah, the ox, and we throw them twenty bucks. I'm like, hey, we're gonna play this song. We're gonna do this music video. Will you guys dance? Yeah. Well, so we we turn it on. They're like, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> and then we turn the song on, and they're like, oh, okay, let's go. Yeah. And we're break dancing. They're doing windmills. I'm break dancing. We're singing to the camera. It ended up being an awesome thing. A whole crowd surrounded us. They're all cheering. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really, really fun thing. So I hope the video portrays some of the of the fun that we were having that day. But it was fly by the seat of our pants and yeah. genre all day, every day. So you guys, and that's the best part, like just listen, that the first song you guys put out, because it was like you guys were just having fun doing stuff. And then all of a sudden, I'm seeing these videos of you guys in a studio. Like, yeah. what is going on? Sound studio. I'm not talking just like a right. podcast studio. Mm-hmm. Sound studio. And then all of a sudden, I hear the sound. I'm like, damn, these guys are actually like serious they're good at what they're doing man it's just like wrestling man it's exciting it's frustrating it's a it's a brand new challenge and once the olympic trials were over for me personally i needed something i needed something because i agree uh, something to chase that's way too big of a goal that you're never going to achieve at least everyone thinks that and uh but the people that are around us they believe in us and they they give us a deal on everything and so that's awesome producer charges us next to nothing uh, the media team charges us next to nothing. And so everybody just wants it to, to blow up. All our deals are when it blows up, we'll get paid this. And so I'm like, cool. And yeah. so if it, do, if it does what it does, then it's cool. But man, I'm having such a blast. It's so much fun making music. It's so much fun doing the podcast, meeting people like you, bringing yeah. other people in, bringing people that I've always looked up to and really getting their backstory. And so if you guys yeah. want to check the podcast stuff out, you can find it on my YouTube channel. If you want to listen to the music it's on spotify apple music everywhere uh but we're getting better and better and and just just watch Something that's awesome pop off at some point if it doesn't that's so cool that's fine too <laughs> and that's the best part because you can tell you guys are having fun and that makes watching it fun because you guys are living it up i mean just watching you guys mm-hmm. in the last one you put out when you i don't care if it's if it's content of just doing a move you guys being the grinch and santa like yeah, right. that's the <laughs> shit I love that yeah, stuff because yeah. I'm I'm not that open with things, but I still have fun with that kind of stuff. Like I think it's awesome. I think yeah, it's yeah. I think it's great that you guys are also able to take something that you love and incorporate it into something else that you can enjoy and love, mm-hmm. and it's yours. That's what it is for me too. This is mine. Yep. I don't answer to anybody. Yeah, I don't. Right. Nobody yeah. tells me what I can put out and what I can't put out. Yeah. I don't care if there's five people watching or zero po- people watching or five hundred people watching. Mm-hmm. I'm putting it out because I like talking to guys like you, just like yeah. you talking. I talk to Frank Jasper quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, shoot from Vision Quest. The, the guy's a, yeah. a Chinese nutritionist, man. Like he had no idea, no clue. But that's why we do this stuff because yeah. we like talking to interesting people, spreading the word, and kind of having fun with all of it. So I appreciate, man. It, we've been going, dude, we've been going for almost an hour now, but uh, you're just as busy as I am with doing stuff. And obviously with the podcast, you guys are putting all, all kinds of stuff together. So I'm going to get out of your hair, but I'm going to talk to you for a second. Just after we cut out here, okay. I'm going to play some music. Um, but again, uh, everybody go check out no genre podcast. Uh, go check out the YouTube channel. They got check them out on Spotify. They got music out. Not only they got the podcast. So, I mean, you guys are blowing up. It's fun yeah, to watch. Find, it's find really the uh, OGWC, OG Wrestling Club Instagram yep. is where you can find all our adult wrestling stuff, too. We didn't really get to touch on it, but that's cool. I'm busy. I'm tired. See ya. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. No shit, right? Uh, watch out for the NJRTC, too, man. Those guys are coming yeah, up. You guys killed coming. it. So mm-hmm. we are going to get out of here, folks. We appreciate every one of you joining us. It's been a little bit, but that's kind of what happens, and things happen in life, and we just roll with it. But uh, we're out. All of our episodes are brought to you by Appleton Tattoo, located at 117 South Appleton Street in Appleton, Wisconsin, right off the main drag on College Avenue. You can't miss them. 
I've had some work done. Uh, I have a Celtic cross that covers my back that was done by Jason. We're not done yet. Uh, Jason Winans and crew, uh, the artists that he have there, those guys are the best in the Fox Valley. Um, they are definitely one to go to. If it's something that you've just been kind of throwing around, they'll make you feel comfortable. It's a very clean environment, very nice crew, um, and very willing to get done whatever you need done when you need it done. Um, you can message them on Facebook. I know they're on Facebook. You can give them a call uh, at 920-604-8289 and get in touch with Jason Winans and crew at Appleton Tattoo, located again in Appleton, Wisconsin at 117 South Appleton Street, right in Appleton. Very flexible hours, great crew, clean environment again. Uh, I would not send you anywhere else except for these guys. Appleton Tattoo.